Hey everyone and welcome back to part two of the reinforcement learning cart pull tutorial. So today what we're actually going to do is instead of just experimenting with Jim, we're actually going to get into building our model and making this whole thing work and putting it all together. So before we actually jump into the code, I want to talk a little bit about how our model will actually work. How will it learn from its experiences and get better over time? So there's a million ways you can do this. And what we're going to be doing is we are going to be making something called a deep policy. So when I say policy, all a policy is, right? It's, it's a way that our agent, and by agent, I mean our program, it's a way our agent chooses what action to make, whether or not to make the cart go left or go right. And in a more complex game, that could get much more complex um, in terms of having to jump and shoot and all these things at the same time. So we're going to make an agent that uses deep learning to decide the policy or what actions to take. So if you haven't watched my classification, classification tutorial videos in the previous videos I made, I would recommend go watch, going and watching those because I'll make references to them. You don't need to know it, um, but it would be helpful. So jumping off, the way our deep neural network will work is very similar to the way we would approach any supervised learning problem. We'll have an input. We will have a few layers. In this case, we're going to be using normal fully connected feed forward layers. And then we'll have a loss and we'll try to optimize that loss and minimize that loss. So what's the difference? And the real difference is, is that instead of our loss being calculated by how wrong we were, our loss is actually decided by what our reward is, right? So if we have a positive, a lot of positive rewards and we're doing well, well, then our loss is gonna be pretty small, right? Because we're not doing anything too wrong. But if we have a lot of negative reward, which in the cart pull example won't be the case, but if we did have a lot of negative reward, our loss would be very, very high because we would have a lot of error. So all we're gonna do is build out that normal that neural network like normal, but our error will our error or loss will be calculated using our reward. So jumping into that, I'm actually going to create a few cells right here. We'll come back to this later after we've got our network made. So the first thing we want is we want an input layer. And I'm gonna be using tflearn. So if you don't know tflearn, I also have a video on that. It's pretty simple. Lots of this will also just be normal TensorFlow. So the first thing we need is an input, uh, something for input data. So we're, we'll call that the observation, observation, right? Because the observation is what we get from our environment. So our observation, remember earlier, if we printed out the environment, we got four different values for the state of the game. So we'll create input value for as many frames as we want and four values. Next, what we'll go ahead and do is we will start making our actual dense layers. So we'll start off by creating a network and having a fully connected layer from the input data um, to this, um, or rather we'll connect the input layer to a new layer with 256 nodes and a ReLU activation function. Now there's a thousand ways you can do this, but I'm just gonna do it this way. So there's a lot of questions you can ask and some of them I'll be able to answer as to why I made certain choices, but some of them are just because they work. Other ways might honestly work better. So we're gonna do the same thing two more times and just have a few layers. The only difference in this layer is that we're connecting another layer to this network, not the input data. So make sure to change this right here. Um, awesome, so we have three densely connected layers and then we're gonna wanna finish that out with a output layer that has two nodes, one for left and one for right and uses a softmax. And the reason we use softmax is because we want the probability or rather, yeah, I guess not necessarily the probability but the likelihood that going left will be what we want and the likelihood that going right will be what we want. Awesome, so now that we've got that, here's where things start to get a little different, right? Because to be able to process what our law should be, we need to know what action we took and how much we reward we got for taking that action. So for the reward, we'll type out, we'll call it reward holder, and we'll say it's equal to tf.placeholder. And this placeholder will be a float because our, as you might guess, you know, our reward can be any number 
Well, I mean, in carpool, it's always going to be one or nothing. But in other cases, um, we might have floats, and this works as a float too. And we can have just as many as we have frames, so no specific dimension there. And then we'll want something similar, but an action holder, which will tell us which action we took. So for the action holder, we're actually going to have an int. And there's different ways you could represent this, but once we actually get into how I'm going to do it, you'll see why we need an int here soon. So what we actually want to do is you got to keep in mind, right, when we pass our observations through our neural network and get out a result or an output, only one of our, to some extent, you can say only one of the two nodes, one of the two output nodes is at fault. Because if we went to, if we went left when we should have gone right, well, then our left node was too strong. Technically, you could also say the right one was too weak. But the way we'll, the math kind of works out for us is that if we say the left one was too strong, well, we kind of want to take that, make sure that one's responsible and adjust it accordingly. Not everything, just the nodes that were wrong. So to get the responsible outputs, this is a little bit tricky, right? But follow with me. I'll try to explain it as best as I can. So we'll say res uh, responsible output. I mean, honestly, yeah, outputs. And what we're going to do is we're going to gather the nodes. So tf.gather, I'm going to write this out really quick and then kind of explain it as I go. So the first thing we want to do is take all the nodes in our output layer, right? So if we do tf.reshape out to negative one, this is just taking all of the outputs from every frame, right? So let's say we have 10 frames. Each of those frames has uh, two possible outputs. So that's 20 output nodes, right? So we're reshaping those all and we're kind of flattening them. And then what we want to do is from each of those nodes, we want to get the one which action we took. And by that, I mean, for the first two nodes in this giant flattened list, if we went left, we want to get the first node. If we want went right, we want to get the second node. Now, for the second frame, we're going to have the third and fourth output nodes. If we took a left, we'll want the third node. If we took a right, we'll want the fourth node. And essentially, the way we can do this is with TF gather. So from these, the ones we want to gather are, and there's a little, again, there's a little bit tricky here, but stick with me as I go through this what we'll want is this right here. So what we're doing is taking it step by step is we take a range, right? Our range is from zero to the total amount of nodes we have. This is the total amount of nodes we have. There's, let's say 10 frames, two nodes in each frame. So that would be 20 nodes. And we want to increment this range by two at a time. So we'll have zero, two, four, six, and so on all the way up to 20, or not 20, 18, I guess. Um, and then we'll add the action holder. So what this does is if we have a list, say zero, two, four, six, and so on, and the first node, we take a left, well, the action is a zero, right? Because we have an action that's zero or one. So if we take a left, well, we start at zero, we add zero for our action, we end up at zero. So we're taking the first node, which is a left. Now, let's say we have the maybe fifth node, right? Or we're talking about the fifth frame. So the fifth frame uses the nodes, the 10 and the 11th nodes. So we start off at 10 or 11, and then our action is either zero or one. So if we take zero, 10 plus zero is as you might guess, 10, that's a left. And if we have if we have a right, that would be a one action. The action would be a one. So 10 plus one is 11, and 11 was the node that represents the right movement. Now, this is the definitely the most complicated weird thing in the entire tutorial. So if you don't get it right away, it took me forever to understand this. Just go over it a few times, experiment with kind of how this works, and think over it a few times. Um, and once you get this, you're definitely going to get everything else no problem. So moving on, now we can calculate our loss now that we know which outputs are responsible. So you can say the loss is equal to negative, and this is very similar to what we've done in the past. Here got reduce mean, reduce mean. And then from here, we want to log, and this is again, very standard way of taking loss. Log our responsible outputs, responsible outputs. 
And then we want to multiply that by the reward holder. And why do we do that? The reason we do that is because we want our loss to be kind of corresponding to our reward. So let's say we got a negative 10 reward, right? Um, well, we want our loss, this part right here, to be negative. So multiplying our reward by our actual outputs that were wrong tells us it kind of changes the scale and magnitude of our loss, which is, I mean, what the reward should be doing, right? Our reward is what decides how much loss we have. And then we just need to make, you know, a nice optimizer. Um, simple, pretty standard stuff right here. We're going to use an atom optimizer. There's other things you can use. I'm just using this because it works. <laughs> um, and for our update step, what we're going to do is we are going to have that optimizer minimize our minimize minimize yeah ooh, minimize our loss so hopefully no errors there oh responsible outputs where is that responsible outputs cool hopefully that's good there awesome so we've got our actual model built by far i think the hardest part right here so if you've made it this part especially past this line you're doing pretty good thank you guys so much for joining me for this tutorial I hope you guys, I know it was confusing and we don't have anything to show yet, but definitely stick in for the next tutorial or two uh, where we finish this up and actually see the fruits of this labor because this neural network right here, I know it's pretty complex, but it will get us some pretty cool results. So thank you for sticking around till the end. If this video helped you out, I really appreciate it. If you consider leaving a like and subscribing, definitely check out the next videos and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.